In this lesson, we're going to find the composition of one function with another function. We're also going to evaluate combinations of functions. In this example, we're asked to use the graph of function f and g to evaluate the expression f plus g of 4. So recall in the previous section, we solved these type of uh, problems algebraically. Recall that you simply uh, added the two functions and then plug in a 4, or you can do the process all in one. Well, this is the same thing except it's just in the form of a graph. So to find f plus g of 4, the first thing we need to do is to find, uh, that's going to involve finding f of 4 and then finding g of 4 uh, and then adding those two numbers together. So let's first uh, find f of 4. So on the f of x, uh, function, which is the one indicated in blue, on the x-axis we're going to go to 4. We're not on that blue graph yet. To get on that graph, we have to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we'll be on that graph. So therefore, uh, f of 4 will equal 9. Now let's find g of 4. So if we go over x where 4 is to find our y value, our output, we're not on the graph. To get on the graph, we would have to go up 2. That's 1, 2. So therefore, g of 4 will equal 2. So we take those output values that we just got and we're just simply going to add them together to give us 11. So therefore, f plus g of 4 equals 11. And this was straight from our textbooks, thanks to Pearson, uh, with the image here uh, of the graph to help us to uh, evaluate composite functions. In this example, we're asked to use the graph of the function f and g to evaluate the expression f minus g of negative 2. Uh, so we're going to find the uh, value of f of negative 2 and then find the value of g of negative 2. Uh, and then we're simply going to uh, as you notice, there's a minus sign between them. We're going to subtract those two functions once we evaluate them each for negative 2. So let's start with the f of x function, which indicates here with the blue graph. So f of negative 2, let's go over to negative 2 where x is. We're not on the graph. To get on the graph, we have to move down 1, 2, 3. So therefore, f of negative 2 equals negative 3. And now we want to evaluate g of negative 2. So if we go over 1, 2 to the negative side, uh, we will never be on the graph because the graph of uh, g of x does not extend on the negative side. Uh, that's the square root function, which we know does not include any negative numbers. So it is not on the domain of that function. Uh, so we would say that it is undefined for g of negative 2. And if any part of it is undefined, uh, we would say that the uh, function itself of finding f minus g of negative 2 uh, that would be undefined. Here we're asked to use the graph of the function f and g to evaluate the expression f times g of 1. So we're going to evaluate both functions for 1 and then multiply their outputs together. So first, let's find f of 1. 
Notice the blue graph represents the f of x function and the red graph or the pink, hot pink graph represents the g of x. So let's find f of 1 if we go to 1 on the x-axis. We are not on the graph, so to get on that blue graph, we're going to move up 1, 2, 3. So therefore, f of 1 will equal 3. Now let's find g of 1. So we're going to go over 1. We're not on the graph. To get on the g of x graph, we would have to move up 1. So f of, excuse me, g of 1 will equal 1. So now that we have their outputs, uh, we have 3 times 1, and 3 times 1 is 3, so therefore f times g of 1 will equal 3. In this example, we're asked to use the graph of g of f and g to evaluate the expression f over g of 0. So here we're going to evaluate the f of x function for 0 as well as the g of 0. And then we're going to divide those two functions, their outputs. So let's go ahead and begin first by uh, finding, evaluating the top, finding uh, f of 0. So let's go over to our f of x graph uh, at 0 for x. To get on the graph, I would have to move up 1. So therefore, f of 0 equals 1. Next, we want to find g of 0. So starting at 0, we are already on the g um, of x graph. So our output would be 0. So on the bottom, we're going to have 0 as our output. So you should know by now that anytime you have a fraction and you have a 0 in the bottom, that the answer is always, always going to equal undefined. So the expression f over g of 0 is undefined. Lastly, we are asked to uh, use the given representation of the function f and g to evaluate the expression f plus g of 2. So we're going to uh, first find f of 2 and then g of 2 and then add these uh, output functions together. So let's get those outputs starting with f of 2. So uh, if you look at the table of values here, uh, this is, the first column represents your input. Uh, the second column represents the output for uh, the f of x function. And the third column represents the output of the g of x function. So since we want to find f of 2, we're going to go to where we're inputting a 2. Um, and then in inputting a 2, the output that you're going to get out for the f of x function, uh, we can see here is going to be a 7. So therefore, f of 2 will equal 7. And now looking at plugging in a 2 uh, for the g of x function, uh, we can see that our output uh, then would be uh, negative 2. So when we put these outputs together, uh, in terms of combining them, 7 take away 2 uh, is going to leave us uh, with an answer of 5. So f plus g of 2 then will equal 5. 
And that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching math videos on PowerPoint with Dr. Spates. I hope you learned something. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe.